Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the module on modeling and simulation in Grasshopper. In this module, I introduce you to modeling and simulation techniques using the visual programming environment Grasshopper for Rhino 3D. From the preceding modules, you should have a good understanding of programming with C-Sharp and of the model theory. In this module, we develop our own simulation models. To control them, you apply your C-Sharp programming skills. We start with one of the fundamentals for every simulation, the growth models. There are basically two main growth models. First, the exponential growth model, which models a population's individual growth rate that stays the same regardless of population size, making the population grow faster and faster as it gets larger. In nature, Populations may grow exponentially for some period, but they will ultimately be limited by resource availability. This can be modeled by the logistic growth, where a population's growth rate gets smaller and smaller as population size approaches a maximum imposed by limited resources in the environment, known as the carrying capacity. The exponential growth produces a J-shaped curve, while logistic growth produces an S-shaped curve. We can find the two curves in the global population growth, which was by today an exponential growth, reaching 7.6 billion people in 2018. The prediction by the United Nations in the same graph shows the curve changes to a logistic growth reaching approximately 11 billion people at the end of the 21st century. This can be considered as some kind of limit by the resources of our planet. So the capacity is reached by the 11 billion people. But it also means um, from going from 7.6 billion people to 11 billion people that we need a lot of new sustainable cities in the coming decades. Therefore. Let's look at the basic growth functions in Grasshopper. In Grasshopper, please open the file O1 underline growth. This is our basic file that contains the two growth models. To run the models, you need to have installed the Anemone plugin. So at the top of the file of the definition, you find the document info, which comes from the Meta Hopper plugin. And this tells you which of the external um, plugins that are available for Grasshopper um, is used in this definition. So here we find Anemone in the version 0.4. So you need at least have this or a newer one. Anemone itself um, is what you can find here at this tab. We only need the loop start component and the loop end component. This represents in the visual program environment basically a, a kind of a for loop. Um, with the n input parameter, you define the number of iterations that you want to have this loop run through. And the, uh, in this case, the D1 is the parameter that you can use. You can add also additional parameters by clicking the plus icon um, for both of the, the components, the start and the end. And to close the loop, we need to link the input or the, the return to the, um, to the loop end, to the loop beginning uh, icons of these components. You can see the usage um, of this loop component down here. So everything that happens between the um, start or the, the start condition of a variable, in this case d0, to the end. And this is what happens inside a loop, so inside the curly brackets of a for loop, for example. It's just a visual representation. So let's move the two icons above D1 
this one. So you see, I just renamed the variables, which is here the D0 and to the stock variable. And I consistently use it as a stock variable in all my inputs and outputs and in the other components. Okay, so that's just a brief introduction of the Anemone plugin, um, which we use in these examples of the module um, uh, modeling and simulation for representing our loops, which is very nice because then you have also a visual output, which we look at um, here in this curve. To start a loop, we double click on the loop start component. And now you can see uh, the loop is um, running. And um, as we see from the title, we have here an exponential growth function, um, which creates this J curve. So here you see I've defined that I want to have 50 iterations. Here I see my um, current iterations. Um, the counter and this is happens hap this happens um, every iteration what is behind the system formula so for this system formula i've used um, a component from the math tab this is the evaluation component which is just renamed here and what you see is i have a, a function as an input and x and y predefined but we can add additional variables as input for this component. This is related to our C sharp component because all the inputs that we have here, if I add a, sec, uh, a third one set, um, I can use the variables inside my component. So I can do something with them here. But we don't write a C sharp script for now in this example. Here we use this expression editor that we have here um, to make some basic computations in this expression design or editor. Okay, so let's delete this one and go to our first simple growth function. That's what you can see here um, from inside our um, function or the expression designer. What we do is we have here this stock input, which comes from our loop. So the stock that I defined as um, what is uh, in the beginning, we have the stock set to one. Zoom out to get rid of these icons. So in the beginning, the stocks is one. And what we do is we say um, in each iteration, I want to have the stock the current stock plus the growth rate multiplied by the stock. So our growth rate is um, 0 0.1, means after the first iteration, I have one plus 0 0.1 multiplied by one is 0 0.1, um, makes 1.1. This is the, the return value after our first iteration. And then it's sent to the end of our loop and here it returns it to the beginning and the stock starts now from 1.1 and is feed it again in our expression designer means we have now 1.1 plus um, 0 0.1 multiplied by 1.1 equals to 1.21 and so on and so on. So this is what happens in each iteration. So that's recorded here to record the, um, the current st the states of your uh, loop, you will have to right click on the loop end component and select record data. This um, creates here this recording, which you can also plot as this curve. So the curve component itself, if you look at it, comes from display and the quick graph allows you to plot a set of numbers, which is this list of numbers. Well, here we see the current um, stocks, the current value of the stocks, um, which is the, in, in, in my case, the end of loop, uh, the, the end at step 50. Just looking back into the formula editor. So here um, 
you see my input values are used for the formula. If I rename the input variable, I also have to change the name in here. And here are all the mathematical operators that you can use in the editor. And so usually it's good if you restrict it to one line of code or one mathematical formula. If it becomes more complex, um, it makes sense to go to the C-sharp script, what we will do later in the next examples. But for now, we have a very nice way to model our very basic functions. So the next one is the logistic growth, which you find just below um, the exponential one in the second group. So the setup is primarily the same. We have the start and the end. If I run the loop, um, we see again the execution of my logistic growth model, which creates now this S-shaped curve. So in my case, it's relatively slow because I am doing the recording in parallel. But you see, if you wait a while, you create this S-shape. So here I set the, the capacity to two, means my model will never exceed the value two. So it gradually reaches the value two, 1.97. You can also increase the repetitions, the number of repetitions of this loop and then this curve will come closer to two, but it will never become bigger. You can play around with the parameters and change it to three, four, and so on, and just observe what happens. Also, if you manipulate the growth rate, you will see a different um, development of this curve. But most interesting is what um, or how the formula itself looks. It is very similar to our um, exponential growth function. Let's increase the window. So what you see is we have the same beginning. We use the stock, which is 0 0.1 in this case, and that's feed it into um, our expression. And this is um, added by the stock multiplied by a growth rate plus an additional value which says uh, I reduce from my capacity, in my case the capacity is two, I reduce the current stock and divide it by the capacity. Means in the beginning when my initial stock is very small, I reduce only a very small value from the capacity and the result is I use the uh, capacity divided by the capacity, which is more or less the value one. So there is no big effect on the exponential growth function itself. But if the stocks become bigger and bigger, um, we can see it's reduced from the capacity and the um, division, the result of this division becomes smaller and smaller if this value um, at the top of the uh, division becomes bigger and bigger. So this um, leads to this decrease in the growth curve itself. So we reduce the um, values that are added in each step because we add here a very small factor in this multiplication. So we add smaller values. If this becomes near to zero, we don't add anything at all because all this term becomes zero if this becomes zero itself. Okay, so these two formula, they are the very basic um, growth models, growth uh, formulas. Here, um, I just wanted to show you if you want to see the formula that is hidden in this component Outside of the component, you can copy and paste it to a panel. So that's exactly the same what's inside. And if you link it to the input of the um, expression editor, so the F is the expression, the function, then if I run it again, you see the same thing happens. I iterate through my expression, which is now this one, and I cannot open the expression editor now because what I 
would see um, is written in the panel here. Okay, now I think you have a very nice overview of the usage of the simple expression editor for implementing the basic models, the logistic and the um, exponential growth. We will use the logistic and um, exponential growth model later in our first basic urban simulation model. But now um, I will introduce a few applications how to apply the growth models in a few examples that are used for urban growth models that you can see behind me in the videos. The models um, show typical urban development models um, simulating how regional or urban processes works. So the growth of a settlement, how individual areas are developed over time. The first model that you see um, shows a linear growth, so where one area, one cell after the other is developed or built by some kind of settlement activity. Um, the second model that you see shows you um, a kind of a fractal growth for um, urban areas like presented by Michael Betty a few uh, decades ago and this already shows an exponential growth because the cells that are developed in the next iteration depends on the border of the current settlement which is bigger um, as the settlement grows so then more and more cells are developed so this is now a relationship to this exponential growth model that we've seen in our simple um, expression in the first example. The next one is an, a, a so-called diffusion limited aggregation model where uh, somehow free floating units are connected to, um, for example, a settlement. And you see in the beginning these red dots, these are the, the particles or the elements that are connected and the number of these red dots these are also the resources so after the growth process starts you can see um, it grows exponentially how the um, structures develop how they grow but in the end it reaches their the capacity so all the resources are being used and we see this kind of uh, the, the typical uh, curve of this s-shaped logistic growth model. And in the very end, we find again a, a kind of a growth model for, um, inspired by snowflakes or Chrysler growth, which can be also used as an analogy to explain the growth of settlements, of cities. Um, the the um, symmetrical growth process, but if you change a little bit the parameters and add some randomness, you get these um, more organic growth structures, as you can see it in the video. Um, and in the last example, you see a very symmetric uh, growth of a Chrysler, um, which is the origin of, the, of these growth models. So with this, I just wanted to give you some next steps, what you can do with the knowledge about the growth models. We will look into um, the, the basics of system dynamics in the next um, lesson and come back to the growth models then in our first urban simulation where we use these dependencies um, for growing something or even shrinking something which is more or less the same not just just with um, inverting the, the logic of the function so with this we are at the end of the lesson.